Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 2 to 11. And the message today, go now and leave your life of sin. So let us read this together. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and, st and started to ride on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and rode on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and leave your life of sin. And this is the word of God. When you read this story, and as I am going to explain this story, it is one of the most beautiful stories that we will find in the Bible where Jesus changed the circumstances and the life of a woman that was guilty as charged. If you look at this story, and we look at what happened last week with the temptations of Jesus in the desert, this was another way how the Pharisees tried to put Jesus in a corner. And the reason why they questioned him was not to receive knowledge from him, they were not willing to sit down so that he can teach them. It was a trap. It was a way of asking Jesus a question. And hopefully he will make a mistake. And then they will have a base to say he is guilty of charge. He doesn't follow the law of Moses. So this was the whole story behind the story that Jesus explained in a most fashioned way, by using this woman to say, let, let I show you who the real Jesus is. So you can imagine now, Jesus sitting there. If we read this story, he was busy with the Bible study. People were sitting there listening to him, listen to his teachings, which was amazing teaching. At that moment and suddenly guess what happened it's like we sitting here in the sanctuary and some at some point in the service somebody just burst through the doors of uh, the sanctuary and say stop here is a lady that we caught in the act of adultery we have to judge her now so just imagine what was happening at that moment everybody looked around and asked wasn't there a better time to do this? We are busy listening to the teaching of Jesus. So you can just imagine that tense environment. What is going to happen now? And remember, if a Pharisee burst in there and say, listen, you have to judge this woman now. You have to listen. And now everybody look at Jesus and say, oh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? That poor woman, imagine that woman 
was caught in the act of adultery. She knew exactly what's going to happen with her according to the law of Moses. She had to be stoned. She was standing there knowing that this is her last day. They're going to stone her. She's going to die because she was caught in the act, red-handed. She didn't have anything to say. But she was in the merciful hands of Jesus. And in the judgmental hands of the Pharisees and the religious leaders. Imagine that moment, I think it was terrifying. Think about it. Terrifying moments for women. But there is a a very interesting thing. If you are caught in the act of adultery by the Pharisees, most likely, in this situation, how does that happen? Does the Pharisees usually just, just burst into your house and look what you do? No, they did not do that. So this was a setup, most probably. So this is why I say the story is just, there's so much more in the story than just, let's read about the woman that was caught in the act of adultery. This, This was most probably a setup because the Pharisees caught her in the act so that they immediately can take her to Jesus and say, now you're going to be the judge. You have to condemn this lady. And if you don't, we know what to use against you. Then this amazing thing happened. This lady shivering in front of them all, knowing this is the last day. There's not even a chance for her to go back to her house and say, I am sorry, because the moment that she walks out of that temple, she's going to feel the rocks against her head and her back. She's going to die. What did Jesus do? Just think about it. If that was you in that moment, what would you do? Jesus... Looked down to the ground, took his finger, and started writing on the ground. Was it in dirt that they could read it? I wonder. Was it on a hard surface that nobody could see that? But you know what I want to know is, so Jesus, why didn't you tell us here what you wrote down in the sand? Because obviously you did that so that somebody can read it so the story can make sense to us. So Jesus, what did, you, what did you write in that sand? What did you write in that dirt? We don't know. But if we read the Greek for the writing part, Jesus was writing in the sand. It means the following. It was writing against something. Standing on the opposite side of what your idea was. So his writing was, if we understand the Greek correct, he was trying to oppose them in this writing. So suddenly Jesus started writing in the sand. I, according to this, believe that they could read what was going on there. Because suddenly when Jesus was writing on the sand, remember his words was also, if one of you, Do not have any sins. Start throwing these rocks now. But if you do have sins, drop the rocks. And now you can imagine, listen to this. I'm going to read this again so that you can understand. At those who heard began to go away. One at a time. The older ones first. So you know the older ones first? They are the guys with experience. Those are the the real Pharisees that people look up to and say, hey, this is a Pharisee with a lot of experience. And they started walking first because Jesus asked, if you do not have sins, do you have sins? If you don't, you can start throwing the rocks. But if you do have sins, guess what you have to start doing? Drop the rock. Guess what happened with the older experienced Pharisees? Drop the rocks. Walk out, one by one. And then suddenly the younger Pharisees and religious leaders look at the older ones and they said, oh, if they are leaving, we are leaving. That's what happened in the story. And you just see, they drop rocks. You can see the dust in the sand because it's rocks hitting the ground. 
because all of them sinned. So if we go and dig deeper into the story, what, what was maybe, let, let us dream today, what was maybe the words in the sand? Maybe the sins that Jesus know that they do on a daily basis. Maybe hypocrisy was in the sand, maybe. Say, hey, you say one thing, but you do something different. You have sins, but you're not going to be killed by a stone. But this lady committed a sin, but you want to kill her. So you are a hypocrite. You say one thing, but you do the opposite thing. Maybe Jesus was saying, are you lying, maybe? Are you not honest to yourself? Because if we go and read the words of Jesus in the Gospels about adultery, it say adultery don't just happen in the act. Adultery happens when you even have it in your mind when you look at a woman. You committed sin. Maybe Jesus wrote down, was there lust in your thoughts? And they knew. We have to drop this rock immediately. So they are the ones coming to condemn this lady. And they were the ones, listen to this. They were the ones who were not qualified to condemn this lady because they are sinners as well. But the one they brought this lady to was qualified to do the judgment because he was Jesus. He's one without sin. He was the Son of God, not one sin on His name. So He was the one qualified to say, Hey, I don't have sin, so I can throw a rock. Jesus had the power to throw the rock at this lady, to judge her, and to say yes. You know the temptation that Jesus had at that moment? If you were doing a Bible study and the Pharisees and religious leaders ran through this aisle and stood in front of the crowds and say, you're going to say, what are we going to do with this lady? A temptation of Jesus to say, yes, I know what the law of Moses is teaching. Yes, you can throw her with rocks. You can stone her to death. That's okay. The temptation of doing that because it was okay in the context of those days to do that. The temptation of Jesus to go with the crowds was there. Jesus did not do that. He walked away from the temptation of doing that and he, he was riding in the sand. Say, hey, listen, those of you who do not have one sin on your name, throw the first rock. And they drop the rocks. Jesus, I think that was an amazing moment. If you read the scripture reading, Jesus looked up at the lady and say, where are they? Everybody is gone now. So who was in that moment? I wonder what happened with those people that attended the Bible study. They were gone. Everybody was gone. It was just Jesus. And the lady was caught red-handed in adultery. And now listen to his words. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. That sir is also in different translations being translated as no one, Lord. Meaningly, she knows exactly who she is dealing with at that moment, with the Lord of Lords. But Jesus also had respect for this sinful woman. When he looked at her, he said, woman, and we also find this word woman, where Jesus was hanging on the cross and referred to the woman underneath him, say, woman. A respectful way of saying, I respect you as a woman. I respect you as somebody that was caught in the act of sin. I still respect you. And then the words. Has no one condemned you? No one, sir. She said, then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. So suddenly, she is meeting the graceful Jesus, a Lord of second chances. And you know, we are in different camps today when we read this. 
Maybe you are the Pharisee that burst in there. Say, I have the facts. I have to condemn you today. I want to stone you because you are a sinful person. I, I know I have everything. I, I just want to destroy. I want to break up everything in your life. You, want to, you have to be a broken person after I condemn you. Maybe we are the ones with the rocks in the hands, throwing it to our husbands, throwing it to our wives, throwing it to our children, to our parents, to a brother and sister in church. So I'm going to, I'm going to stone you today. So I caught you in the act of sin. Or maybe we stand here like that woman broken. Say, Lord, I'm broken. I've sinned against you. And my life is in your hands. You know what Jesus will tell us? Say, no, come. Those have a heavy weight in life to carry. Those sins that's following you each and every day, bring it to me. I will clear it up for you. I will take it away. Well, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to save you. But then, brothers and sisters, some of you will sit here and say, yeah, this is typically where the church is going today. Everything is good because the grace of God is just big enough. You don't have to worry about sins because God is just going to forgive. You can continue with your sinful life because Jesus died for you on the cross. And in the moment you say, I believe you are saved, you don't have worries. So, pastor, what happened with the fact that we have to condemn? The fact that we have to change? The fact that we have to say, I am sorry, forgiveness, Lord. What happened with that now? Listen to the words of Jesus. It's for those of us who are standing in that camp today. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. Do you hear what Jesus is saying? My grace is here for you. Free. Free, it's here for you. But lady, woman, don't go and sin anymore. Because we know how special this grace of Jesus Christ is today. We will go out today and say, Lord, I don't want to do the sins anymore. I want to follow you. So brothers and sisters, Jesus was tempted to follow those laws of society. The laws of a Moses. Over 600 laws. That they used to judge people all the time. Jesus came and said, listen, I want to teach you who I am. I want to teach you my heart. And my heart is not to condemn you. My heart is here to say, if you are broken, lady, you are healed today because of me, Jesus Christ. But then Jesus say, don't go and sin anymore. That's wrong. You know that old thing in the church that we say, hey, don't hate the sinner, but hate the sins. This is exactly that. Jesus say, I don't hate you. I know you did some bad things in life. If you know, if you go read Psalm 139, it's very clear that the Lord say, when, before you were thinking of something, I already know that thought. Before you were saying something, before it was on your tongue, I already know that. I know exactly. So you know what? Jesus catch us in the act every moment that we sin. That's how it is. What are you and I going to do when we know that we are broken now because of sin? Say, Lord, forgive me. And thank you for grace and second chances. Maybe today if you look at your marriage, maybe if you look at that relationship with somebody that you cannot uh, live with, that you don't want to talk to, that you don't want to have a conversation with, maybe today it's the time to take that rock and say, I drop it. Because that is what Jesus asked us to do. And if you hold that rock in your hand, be careful what Jesus have in his hand for you. Because if I read Matthew 6, like I said last week, if you do not forgive others, how do I have to forgive you? You hear temptation of sinning? Let us not be the Pharisees with rocks in our hands. Let us be in front of Jesus broken and say, Lord, I'm on my knees. I want to walk away from the sin. Please forgive me. Amen.